These are slow rolling flickabats. And that's the worst thing that can happen to you because of using lights like this in combination with wrong shutter speed. However, today I'm going to show you how to fix them just like that in DaVinci Resolve. So let's not waste any more time and head straight to DaVinci. So here we are inside DaVinci Resolve at the Fusion page, but no worries, it won't be too complicated. And the best advantage of using the Fusion page here is that we will be able to easily animate our deep flickering lines throughout our clip. So as you can see here on the left, we have our original footage and on the right, the result of our manipulations. And if I'm scrubbing through it, you can see some lines still appearing. However, if I just play back footage normally, these flickering lines are not visible that much. So now let's get back to the edit page and see how everything is done from scratch. First of all, under Effects, in Effects, grab the adjustment clip, put it in the beginning of your footage. After that, extend it all along to the end of your clip. Now right-click the adjustment clip you've just created and hit Open in Fusion page. In my case, all the lines are visible pretty clearly, but if you want to separate them better, under Effects tab, right here, go to Open Effects and drag Color Compressor and Contrast Pop Notes. In Contrast Pop, increase the detail amount. And in Color Compressor, you can compress saturation to make it black and white, so you can easily tell where each line starts and ends. You can increase this slider to compress some luminance and make the clip overall a bit brighter if that helps in your situation. After that, go to Tools, scroll down and find Color Corrector node, drag and drop it onto the line so it connects automatically, search for Rectangle drag and drop it into the node section and connect it with the color corrector node. This rectangle will be our mask. You should see it here on the screen and you can control it either by dragging it on the clip preview or using the inspector panel here. If you don't see the inspector panel, simply activate it by clicking right here. Now somewhere in the middle, this line I will cover it with our mask. Extend it so it covers the entire line. I'll narrow it down. Okay, now we don't need our contrast and color compressor nodes anymore, so select them. And holding shift, just drag them out from the line. Now head to color corrector node, and here we'll need to adjust our brightness in a way to compensate this flicker line. Start by adjusting the lift to manipulate the darker areas. After that, proceed with the gamma. And finish with gain. What you're trying to do here is to match the colors of the flicker line to non-affected areas. You can see that our edge here is not blurred. Let's fix that. Get back to our rectangle node and adjust the soft edge slider. And by doing that, we have completely eliminated our flicker line. Thing is, they are moving, and that's why we need to animate our mask. To do the animation, search for transform node and drag and drop it between the rectangle and the color corrector. Now to add the animation, click this diamond icon right here. Now hover over this transform node like this and click 
this left dot to display it in the left preview. Now it's time to disable the color corrector. Select contrast pop and color compressor nodes one more time, holding shift, drag and drop them onto the line and check if they're both connected. This one is not, once again, holding shift, drop onto the line, boom. Now we'll need to locate the exact frame where our flickering line leaves and enters the clip. Right now, to make things more convenient, we need to make both viewers exactly the same size. To do that, press the arrow right here, click fit, and now drag this separator until both clips are exactly the same. And now we'll need to locate where this line leaves the frame, both on top and on the bottom. By the way, if you have lost the line, make sure that transform node is selected and use this arrow to go back to the keyframe you've created previously and your line will be the one corresponding to this mask. So here I found the spot where the line goes out of the frame. I simply adjust the position of the mask and after that I'm searching for the same spot but this time for the top side. Now when you've created both keyframes make sure that mask moves exactly the same as the line. Here I think that I can adjust the top a little bit. To do that, open the keyframes tab, press this button to show the entire clip. Now you can hold command or control on windows and zoom in on your keyframes. When the cursor hovers over the keyframe, you can see that it changed its appearance. Now I can simply click and hold to move the keyframe. And you can see that by moving the keyframe, I am also moving the position of the mask. When you're done adjusting the keyframes, simply close the keyframes panel. Once again, select contrast pop and color compressor, holding shift, move them away, turn back on your color character node and watch through your footage to see if everything is okay. Right now, if you see some drift, you can either adjust the keyframes once again or go to rectangle and increase the softness of the edges. And here I think that I can adjust the gain just a bit. Congratulations! You've done the hardest part. Now we need to fix all the other lines, but it won't be as hard because we simply need to duplicate our masks. So select the mask, hit Command C, Command V, or Control C, Control V if you're on Windows. Select the mask you've just created, and using its position, controls on the inspector set move it to the next line. Now duplicate it one more time. Move it down to the third line. Get back to the original one, duplicate it and place it onto the line that is located above. Now click on the transform node, open the spline panel, hit this icon right here to fit our keyframes onto the screen, select all three by dragging the box around them, and press this icon right here to set loop. Now our animation is duplicating again and again. Right now you can see that some lines are missing at the end and at the beginning of our animation. So close the spline panel for now. Head to our beginning keyframe, 
go to the rectangle you've created. Command C, Command V one more time. By the way, to keep things organized, you can either rename these nodes or simply place them in the order of their appearance. So this one is the bottom one. This one is above. This one is the first one we created. It's in the middle. That one is above it. And this one is even higher. Right here. I see that we need two more. Command C, Command V, place it higher up here in the node tree and adjust its location. One more. Check if it's OK. Yeah, and we need two more at the bottom. Duplicating the bottom one, moving it down. And another one. And moving it down as well. Here you can see that the lines become more visible on the next loop, which means uh, that uh, some keyframes are off. That might not be critical for short eclipse, however, for long footage, we need to address this issue. Open the spline panel, hold command and use the wheel to zoom out. Navigate to the next loop, close the spline panel, open the keyframes. Now press and move the keyframe of the top position until you see that the lines have disappeared. And do the same with the bottom keyframe. If you still see some drift, you can close the keyframes panel, open the spline, select the box instrument, draw over your keyframes, and then you can zoom in by holding control and using your wheel and move your keyframes just a little bit either to the left or to the right until you are satisfied with the result. Don't forget to check over the entire clip. You can also try extending your keyframes a bit by dragging these boxes. The better you adjust the keyframes at the beginning, the easier for you it will be to correct that drift over the long clip. And we're done. So it's before and after, before and after. If this tutorial was useful, hit that like button, I really appreciate that. And if you want to know how to fix out of focus footage, watch this video next.